Hello Stampin' Friends! It's Stamp Ventures with Shauna, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada. Welcome to my live tutorial. It's not Tuesday night, it's actually Wednesday and I think, what is it, the day before... the day before St. Patrick's Day, so it's March 16th. And um, yeah, I wasn't just feeling the greatest last night. Um, decided I just needed to rest and relax and um, feeling a bit better today. So hopefully things will all go well for the video. I'm just going to see if I can connect up here with my um, iPad. That way I should be able to see some... Oh, there we go. Some comments coming through. All right. Yay. Okay. I found it. Um, give a high five or um, say hello. Um, let me know if my comments are working. And I think a couple people have found it. So that's always a good sign. All right. Yay. Oh, there's Brenda. Good evening, Brenda. Thanks for giving a shout out. Looks like things are working for me. That's awesome. Um, my funny today might be a little bit hard to read because some of it got caught off by the edge of the printer. But this this completely was me this past week. Grocery stores should have baskets in the middle of the store for those I really overestimated how much I can carry moments. Yeah, um, I went in for three things. Milk, eggs. I can't remember what the third thing was. Milk, eggs and something. And... I happened to go down the aisle with the toilet paper and the paper towel. Well, maybe that was it. I was just going to get one thing of paper towel. And I did get one thing of paper towel. But I knew we were kind of going down on toilet paper. And I said to my husband, well, I'll look. But, I mean, if it's not on sale, I won't get it. We'll wait till it goes on sale. Well, sure enough, it was on sale. Not only was it on sale, you got bonus air miles. Because we're air miles collectors. So I had to get like two things of toilet paper and they weren't just like the little packs they were the bigger I don't know how many in a pack you know like 15 or something like that and all I had was my little bag that had the milk and the eggs in it and so and then in my hand is the oh my paper towel and I'm like trying to pick up two things of toilet paper and I'm getting as far as well it was really close to the self-checkout so then I just lump it all down in one of the self-checkouts and I quickly said to the the person that was working there I, I like I just gotta run and grab a cart so that I can put all this stuff in after I've checked it out they were very patient with me and they understood and they said completely yeah yeah it's a good deal on toilet paper so might as well get it now so yeah, they really should have baskets and carts right in the middle of the store. They would probably get more sales. <laughs> okay, and today's weather word is puddly. Oh, it's so exciting to be able to say puddly and see all those, uh, that melting snow out there. You have to pretty much wear not only rain boots, but you have to wear like full rain coats or rain ponchos so you don't get sprayed when the cars go by but it's wonderful to have some nice weather it's five degrees above the freezing mark today so it was a it was delightful and today's weather is brought to you by the flowering rain boots because it was definitely was a rain boot day today i ended up being able to go for a walk i guess it wasn't today it was yesterday that i walked down in waccamaw valley and i wore my rain boots and i was so glad um because it was very slushy and wet. And um, in case you missed it, uh, I held a flowering rain boots class last week. And these were the cards that we made. Um, the packages for the cards are all sold out now. And um, But just thought I'd show you quickly for your inspiration, um, the cards that we made. This was my March class of the month. And this one was a front step panel 3d card and also this card um, in case you might be wondering what next month's class of the month is going to be all about i've marked it here in the catalog 
next month's class of the month, that would be for April, is going to be using the Hello Ladybug stamp set and the Coordinating Ladybug Builder Punch. And um, I'm excited for this class because uh, not only can you do cute ladybug things and cute flower things, uh, I've seen where somebody has taken this these ladybug wings and punched them with the co coordinating punch and created a flower, a great big flower with just using the wings. And I've also seen how the ladybug is turned into a really sweet bumblebee. So we'll be doing four different cards with that. And um, that will be taking place on the second Wednesday and second Thursday of April. I haven't made up my uh, promotional flyer yet, but if you want to have your name added onto the list for the class, uh, let me know and I can jot it down. And as always, if you can't make it in person, uh, I can do a takeout package for you as well. You will need to have the stamp set and the punch to create the the um, ladybug cards or the cards that we'll be making using these um, these this stamp set and, and punch so just um, keep that in mind for April hello hello to a few more who have hopped on hi Inez and hello Glenda Glenda says I had a cart still empty and went to the washroom when I came back out my cart was gone and I hadn't taken my cane with me oh shoot when I came back up, when I came out, my cart was gone and I hadn't taken my cane with me. I suffered through that trip, just coming and going without having your cane with you. I was going to say, I hope they didn't take your cane on you, but you had to go back and get another cart and go further away. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I told you this story or not, but my father-in-law mentioned he was in the grocery store. This is about a month or two ago. And he was looking for something he had to go back down the aisle and look at something and then you know he continued on um, and he felt this tap on his shoulder and he turned around and a lady said to him I think you've got my cart and sure enough when he had done his looking and he went to go forward he hadn't looked really closely and he grabbed the nearest cart and it turned out to be somebody else's so oh we could write novels about all the things that happen in the grocery store okay for tonight's cards we're going to be doing some neat techniques some cool techniques using the amazing silhouette stamp set and there is a set of dies that are sold in a bundle with it i'm not going to say that they're coordinating because these dies can stand on their own they can be used for anything they have the words you are amazing and the word thanks but you can switch it around a bit if you cut off the s on the thanks then you can use thank and you together um, and they layer so you can get just um, the fine finer detailed outline of the word or you can get um, an extra layer to put the word on so just even if you don't care for the amazing silhouettes the dies are well, they're amazing. And um, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things with these two cards here. Um, and I can probably tell you a little bit about this one too. Now, how did I figure out what was going on in these? Well, part of me can just look and kind of figure it out from the um, pictures in the catalog. But as a demonstrator, I have access to a resource that's um, on the demonstrator website. And if you're a demonstrator, um, you should check this out. So when you click on to the demonstrator homepage, up at the top, you have some ooh, categories that you, there's the ordering category, the business resources category. Keep going along until you get to the happening now category. And when you click on the happening now category, you have different things that you can um, select. and um, you click onto the catalogs category, just the general heading of catalogs. And that takes you to a page that shows like the annual catalog and it shows the current mini catalog. And um, underneath the picture of the mini catalog, um, there is 
a few different choices. And one of them is like, I'm not even sure if I'm telling you the exact right words, but it's something to do with catalog recipes or catalog tutorials or catalog projects. Maybe it's something like that. And when you click on that, it brings up this many, many, many paged PDF and every single design, every single project that's in the catalog is featured there, a picture of it, a little picture of it, and then all the things that they used to create that project are listed. And so, I mean, here, I think I had to go to page, I don't know. No, I don't even know if I can see the page numbers on here, page 100 or something to get to the projects that were shown on page 40. Um, but there I've got a complete list of everything that they used. So um, I'm going to attempt to make this card and show you what they used for it. Now it doesn't give you instructions. It's not like step by step by step, um, but they do give us the paper, the stamps, the ink, the tools and the embellishments. And it does tell you a technique. And one of the techniques is heat embossing. So that gave me an idea of pretty much where I wanted to go to create this card. So I'm going to pull out my supplies and let's see. The first thing I'm going to pull out is the Stamparatus. Now it doesn't, well, yes, it does. It does list that the Stamparatus was used on this card. And I cut a paper piece of basic white paper that I think is about the size that they used because it's just a little bit bigger than this tree image. And it does say that they used Calypso Coral ink. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this image with Calypso Coral ink using the Stamparatus. I'm going to make sure that my paper is snugged up tight into the corner. I, when I'm using a rubber stamp, I like to use one of our... Um, our mats, you know, these silicone ones, um, just to give it a little bit of extra rise. It's easier for along the edge here to make sure that the image touches the paper. So there's my Calypso Coral. And I'm going to give this a really good inking. I don't know if they call this a distinctive stamp, but it's got some really cool texture going on in, right as part of the image. There's little little dots and daps. You know what? I don't think I've ever kind of seasoned this stamp or cleaned it before, so I'm going to ink it up extra. And I was doing a little bit of rubbing on it just to make sure there wasn't any dust from the factory that was going to interfere with the stamping. And when I stamp it down, I don't have to worry about pushing too hard on this side, but closer to where the hinge is on the Stamparatus, I'm going to give it a really good go and um, make sure that all of those droplets of ink are going to make contact with the cardstock. Okay, so crossing fingers. Yay! Now, it looks blotchy, but that's the way the artwork is meant to look on the amazing silhouettes. It's blotchy and splotchy and then there's that white silhouette in the middle. Now what Stampin' Up! did besides inking it with Calypso Coral and you can see there's lights and darks of the coral just the way they've created the artwork here. They have also done a little bit of heat embossing on it and it's just in a couple of splotchy areas and it's gold embossing powder. So pull out my, here it is, my chamois. And I'm going to clean the re residue of the Calypso Coral off because I'm now going to be applying some Versamark ink. And Versamark is the sticky ink that will allow embossing powder to cling to. Now I'm not going to put Versamark ink over the entire tree. So I just want it in places here or there. So I'll just kind of, I know it looks awful. It's really dirty, but it's, trust me, it's a clear sticky ink. Well, it's maybe a hazy sticky ink. So I'll put a little bit here in this corner and mm, yeah, maybe here and here and a little bit down here. And then I'll put a little 
let's see up here I'm kind of going by the picture but it's going to end up being my own thing too like a little there oh what the heck I'll add a little touch down there so you probably can't see it but there's a bit of sticky ink on my tree I'm going to close this clip so coral so I don't have accidents happening and I'm going to bump this you know what while I've got my embossing buddy here I'm just going to give it a go over so there now I'm going to make sure that's back up in the corner right where it was the first go around so that when I stamp again the embossed no the versamarked areas are going to match up with the clips of coral areas but it's only going to put put Versamark in those few areas that I touched on the stamp. Okay, now I think I can move the Stamparatus out of the road. Just lift that up and out. And now I'm going to pull out my gold embossing powder. The gold embossing powder is now sold in the annual catalog in a collection of metallic and metallic powders um, silver gold I think copper it might be something else I'm just gonna I can't see exactly where I put my sticky Versamark ink so I'm just gonna cover this whole thing with the gold powder and then it'll just the extra stuff will just get flicked off Okay, Ooh, you can see where I was touching it along the edges. Sometimes where your fingers are, are the embossing powder wants to stick there. Um, yeah, anywhere there's static or slight bits of finger oils. There. Okay, so done with the gold embossing powder now I'll pull up my heat tool It'll just be noisy for a few seconds while this um, gets heating and you're going to be able to see how the heat tool just melts the powder this is one of the funnest techniques to do um, once it gets hot enough the uh, tool changes that powder to a shiny gold you may or may not be able to see it right now with depending on which way the lighting is shining but when I'm done I'll try and hold it for you to hey I've melted the powder on one side and here we'll do the other side Oh, I kind of like where there's getting some like little, just little split, split splotches of gold. That looks kind of cool too. I could, I suppose, flick some more gold into there. And, but, oh, there, yeah. Now I'll see, see if that's showing up at all for you with the, the gold splotches. Makes it look kind of cool. That's. So we've got a multicolored, multi, yeah, multicolored and multi kind of embossed look with the tree. Now, grabbing the rest of the pieces to put this project together. First of all, I've got Sahara sand cardstock and, and another piece of five and a quarter by four inch Sahara sand that's run through. The embossing folder that is called time mm, mm, mm. I can go back to my cheat notes I knew it earlier today the name of it <laughs> tasteful textile I'm sure hoping they're gonna keep tasteful textile in the next annual catalog and I can glue these two layers together you know I should have waited okay I'm not gonna glue it yet you'll see why okay um, in the catalog sample they've glued the words amazing 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 in the background of the top layer of the Sahara sand and so 
what I've done is I've taken some pieces of Sahara sand. When I first looked at it at, in the picture I, of the catalog, I actually thought it was crumb cake, but the recipe told me otherwise. I've taken and put some adhesive sheets on the back. So when I cut out the word amazing, it's going to be amazingly easy to glue it onto the layers of my card. I won't have to go in and put a whole bunch of little daubs of adhesive in all the tiny little places. So I'm going to pull out my mini stamp and cut and emboss. This is going to take a little while to dry, but okay. Hopefully it's not going to get on too many things. Um, <clears throat> the mini stamp and cut and emboss is on sale. It's 20% off until the end of March. So if you're interested in grabbing one while it's on sale, let me know. You can't fit the regular sized embossing folders in it, but you can get the mini embossing folders and lots of the small detailed dies will fit into it. Um, there is no magnetic platform for it. So, uh, the ladies who were stamping with me last week and this week have been using washi tape just to hold the dies in place. Usually just one little piece like that is good. And when you run your plates through, you want to stagger them so that they don't meet up in one great big bite. It's easier to start eating the sandwich if um, one plate is pulled back from the other. So there we go. I'm going to have to cut the amazing out a couple of times for the background of the card. Oh, you know, oh well, no big deal. Um, you may have noticed that this plate is a lot scratchier and I've been using this as my base plate and I'm gonna to continue to use it as my base plate, just not that time I didn't. <laughs> okay, so amazing number one and you can see on the back it looks white but that's because it's got the, um, this adhesive sheet on it. So I'm going to do three amazings. One, let's see, I turn it around this way. Two, that's the other, another tr tip for any, for any cutting and embossing folder is always um, move around on your cutting plates where you're placing your die. It helps it to wear more evenly and you won't just get lumps and bumps in one area. And you can, you know, flip it to flip it and turn it. So if you've used it a lot at this end down here, you can turn it and so that you tend to use more at that end. Okay, here's amazing number two. There's still some little pieces stuck in there, but I'll go back and cut those, pop those out later. And here we go. Amazing number three. Let's see. Something like that and stagger the plates. Okay, do, 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 do. I always do that. <laughs> the, the Jeopardy, is it Jeopardy? Do, 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 do. <laughs> when you turn the handle, you have to turn it a few times. It's a little hamster wheel. Okay, one, two, three. I think three amazings is enough for the background part. Now, I'm gonna be needing this again so I shall not put it too far away. I'll go back to, you know that silicone mat that I had? That's really good for if you don't want something to stick and you've got glue on it. So I'm gonna pull the silicone mat back in. Silicone mat to the rescue. So even if there's glue on here, it doesn't matter because it's not gonna stick to the silicone. Now with the Amazings, We'll be able to glue these in the background for the card. And I think like they kind of did one, you know, sort of here. And then they had another one. Love to have the take your pick tool handy for jobs like this. Um, maybe one here. And then the other one, I think what they did, I don't know this for sure, because you can't really see in behind the focal point, but I think that they took it and like, do, 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 did a little bit of surgery 
and they put part of it here and oh, I should finish poking these pieces out and put it here so that it looks like it's just been, you know, amazing, 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 amazing. It just carries on over and over and over. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with that. I'm going to start um, gluing these down and that will be easy because I just need to pick off the adhesive sheet on the back. Oh man, are my hands ever shaky tonight? Ooh. Maybe I, is that tea that I had earlier? I might have uh, had too much tea. Okay, try the other side. Maybe my fingernail. Ooh, I bent the A. Oh well, it'll glue back down because it's got nice stickiness on it now. Okay, here we go. Amazing number one. I'm going to put it low and to the right. And this was why I decided I really shouldn't have glued my paper down because I want to be able to trim off those extra little pieces on the edge. And then we'll go for amazing number two. Okay. There we are. Amazing grace. Um, I might make this one hang off a little bit more just to vary it. And that was two and this is two and a half. The zing. This is the zinger part of it. Ooh. Okay. And this is kind of like faux embossing in that it's the same color of cardstock and it's just layered on that tone on tone look. <laughs> I shouldn't pull this quite so hard. It's like an accordion. And amazing number three. Let's see. About ish. Oh, I don't know. About ish there. Ah, and stuck down very nicely. Now I can go back and there's my glue that will just rub off easily because of the, the silicone is nice for that. Shall trim off these little pieces of the words and now I can glue it down to the front of my card. want to put them so amazing is very amazing and not upside down amazing okay so about like that so now I'm ready to glue the focal point on and from what it looks like it really looks to me like the artists used dimensionals to lift the tree up um, because I see a little bit of sh shadow underneath of it from when they took the photograph. So I'll put some dimensionals on. Now I'm going to check and see if there are any questions or um, things, inquiries that have come through. Oh yes, Pam. Thank goodness for the sticker sheets. Like they save the day completely. Um, I'm going to show you another, just a mini card after I'm done this one. And it's another way of using those um, sticker adhesive sheets and um, in combination with embossing. Like they are just the bomb. So um, I think I still have some sticker sheets from when we had our first kind of sticker sheets. I think um, they were made by Sizex. I've still got some of those because when I saw that they were taking them out of the catalog, I'm like, I cannot live without them. So um, I bought a whole bunch of them. And so I've got like all kinds of them here. Now they did make this slightly to the left and right at the top of the card. So I'll pull this down to see if I kind of am sort of matching it up with the top edge. Okay, now you get to do 
more cutting. And to make the cutting, cutting of the words easy, I have more paper with sticker sheets on them, adhesive sheets. So there's basic white with adhesive sheets. And dun -dun -dun, this is Misty Moonlight with adhesive sheets. So to clear the mess, get ready to bring back in the baby boss. So, um, as you can see, the puffy outer edges are blue and then the detailed lettering is white. So I'm going to start with the blue and get the puffy lettering. Let's see. So how many of these can I fit on one? Um, I want the adhesive on the back and I want the puffy parts and I want the puffy U and the puffy R Ooh. and the puffy amazing. Did you used to do like puffy looking word lettering when you were a kid? That was a thing, you know, kind of drawing around the lettering and make it looking puffy. I, these don't really need to stay specifically in one spot. I just don't want them to shift around too much, but that should be good. All in one go. That's great. Okay, here we go. Sing the Jeopardy song. Do 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 do. Oh, kid oak. So the background lettering done in blue, just like that. Is that going to pop out on me? No, I'm going to have to push it with a there. And there's the puffy amazing there. You, oh, yeah, no, there it is. You are amazing. I thought for a minute I forgot something. Okay, so done with the blue. And now I can pull out the white and probably only need one of these if I only needed one for the blue. Um, now that I'm going to do some more cutting. I'm going to take a moment to do the belly button check. This is my belly button puffed out in my baby boss. No, the belly button is not popped out so I can keep cutting. If you start to get a little bit of a swell in the belly, then that means you want to flip your um, plate over because um, it does, it will warp over time. And so you want to try and um, keep the plate touching and flush against the bottom platform as much as you can. Okay, so now we need the detailed U. Oh, I want this paper up, not adhesive up, because we don't want our words upside down and backwards. You are, and we'll go back to the detailed amazing. There it is. Okay, and Stagger the plates, ready to roll. Here we go. Do 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 Yay! Okay, and I can move the baby boss out of the way. So here are detailed words. And if that has um Using the sticker sheets, the adhesive sheets has uh, really caught your attention as to how easy they are to use. You should go write them on your wish list, your shopping list right now, because they're, they're just the cat's meow. Okay, so I need to match up the detailed lettering onto the bubble lettering. R, amazing. There's the U. And poke out the little extras. Oftentimes, when you go to peel off the, the adhesive sheet, the sticker sheet, it will often peel off the little in, insides of those pieces too. Oh, come back here. All right, how do I want to do this? So that I kind of, there, if I put it gently and I want to lay it down, 
matching it up like a puzzle. You can tuck that into there. Hmm. Well, not bad for my first go. Okay. All right. Yep, that worked. Are you amazing? I'm doing it in that order. Are you? Of course. There we go. Hmm. The hardest part of the sticker sheets is just getting them started, getting the peeling off. Okay. So something like, like that. Pretty close. I'm calling it good. And last one. Oh, there. There, I started to peel the back and that took the center of that lettering, out, that letter out. Okay. Whew. Okay, this is a long one. I'm thinking I should probably match up from the middle and then the outsides will fall into place. Does that make sense? If I match up the middle parts and then slowly work my way out out, out, yeah, just kind of work it one letter at a time, to, letter at a time towards the edge there. Yeah. All right. Now we are ready to put these onto the card. And when I look at the catalog, it's got like you somewhere around here, and then it's got R. Well, maybe over here, the R is kind of going off the edge a little. And then there's amazing, which stretches across the bottom, something like this. Yeah, something like that. And then also, oh boy, I'm pretty sure I had some butterflies out here, but if I can see them is the other thing. They were butterflies that had gone rogue. So what happened is I received a shipment of butterflies um, from Stampin' Up! And that's how they came. Look at those butterflies. They're like having a fight. They're getting into a wrestling match with one another. And I phoned Stampin' Up! And I said, you know, these butterflies like are flying all over crazy. And like the adhesives on them, they're sticking to each other. And they said, no problem. We'll send you another one. They said because the butterflies are heavy, they tend to shift around more in, in shipping. Um, so if you ever get embellishments, like butterflies or whatever, and it looks like they're getting into a fight, either call me or call Stamping Up. They will replace them because they should not look like this when they come in the mail. Okay. So I think something like that is how goes. I'll take one last look again. Yeah. And so easy. Peel and stick. Peel and stick. Come on. Getting it started. There we go. The hardest part is done. Amazing. Something like that. Now I'm realizing that I might want to put a little dimensional under the ends of the words that are hanging over the edge because if I don't they're going to fall over and there is stickiness on them they're going to stick down at a different level and I kind of like it that they'd be at the same level so let's just go and put a little mini there oh you know what let's put another mini it's not no there's no such thing as too many dimensionals I don't think well, as long as they're not hanging out over the edge and you can see them. Okay. Okay. Now I think that shifted a little there. Okay. Amazing. Well, it could be just like that. You could give somebody a card and just tell them they are amazing. Like they know they're amazing just by that. But you can also add the R and the U R. And I think the R was just 
kind of going off just the edge a little bit like that. And then we have to add some butterflies, some fight and fighting butterflies. We have some really radical butterflies that's, that Stampin' Up! creates. Okay, so now before I add the butterflies, I'm just going to take a look to see if any questions have popped up. How far over do I want this U? Hmm. You know, it doesn't have to look ex be exactly like the card. It could, in the catalog, it could have my own. Oh, make a decision, Shauna. That's, there we go. Put yourself out of your pain and make a decision. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're almost done. And then I'll show you how to do some of these lettering using this um, adhesive sheets and then make it look like dipped gold. I just got to grab some butterflies. Does anyone have any questions so far? Anything that you're wondering besides what are they going to retire from the annual catalog, which I have no idea other than we know that the, the in colors, the 20, 2020, 20 to 2020 to 2022. That's a lot of twos that those in colors are going away, but, um, we don't know much else other than, oh, and we were, we were notified. There'll be a slight shipping increase. Um, and the slight shipping increase is actually going to start in April, but it's not terrible. Um, if you're putting in an order with a group, like an order that's, you know, going to be over a hundred dollars in either a personal order or a part of a group, it's going to raise the shipping from 10% to 11%. So basically one percentage point, which is not bad. So if you're placing a hundred dollar order, that's an extra 10 cents in shipping. Or if you're placing a $50 order, that's an extra five cents in shipping. So not bad. Um, there is a minimum that we have to pay on, sh on our shipping for orders. And that minimum is basically for anything that's below merchandise of $99, uh, total merchandise of $99. So instead of $9.95, it'll be $10.95 for the minimum shipping. So not a huge difference, but a difference nonetheless. And it's happening, well, my friend who's been just kind of doing the little Tupperware personal discount ordering kind of thing um, said that Tupperware's price is really changing for their shipping. So um, yeah, Stampin' Up! is maybe, maybe we're doing okay. All right, so there's the card. And I feel like it's brighter than maybe I uh, really put more <laughs> Calypso Coral ink on my stamp than I needed to. But um, there's the case of this card and a few uh, neat techniques that you might want to try. But I was going to show you two things, uh, two more things. I'm going to show you how to do the gold dipped lettering here and um, to get the multi colors on uh, the stamped image here. I think this is a three by three card. I won't make it all, but I'll just show you those two techniques that you might want to try because this is a, this is a great stamp set for doing some unique kinds of techniques. So I'm going to pull in mint macaron. Oh, for some reason, I thought I had already put it he Oh, here, there we go. Here you can see the process. Basically, you peel off one side of the sticky sheet of this adhesive sheet, throw away the one that's not sticky at all, and then the one that's ooh, very, very, very sticky. Oh, no, no, I don't want to put it there. Uh, eek. Silly me. Well, maybe it'll be okay there. Okay. I, I thought I, sh I should have put it halfway down wasn't thinking about what I was doing. Okay, there we go. Now, for this, for this, I'm going to be cutting 
on the side that the sticky sheet is on. Like the adhesive sheet, which sounds counter counterintuitive, but that's where the that is where the embossing powder is going to go. Okay, so it's not going to be half dipped. It's going to be like three quarters dipped because <laughs> I just didn't leave enough room at the top. Um, but you'll get how how it works. It's going to be gold dipped lettering. And back with the baby boss. Okay. Do the belly button check. Yeah, still good. Nice and flat to the platform. And here we go. Do 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 do. Don't even get to sing the whole song. Okay. And I think there we go. Gold gold embossing powder. Had to take a look around, but I found it. Everybody has different ways of storing their embossing powder. Some people just store it in the little container just like that and maybe pour it onto a sheet and funnel it back in. But I like to have it in a bigger container so I have um, lots of room to um, tap off. All right. So I could probably save this and use it for something else that I might want to cut out that would have sticky on the back. And um, some people save and reuse their washi tape over again. So you can like take and stick that on your machine if you want. Hey, okay, here we go. Pop out the little bits and bots and pull out the word. So it's got mint macaron at the top and stickiness at the bottom. And this will be easy to peel off because you can see where it starts and stops. Okay, now that I say that, maybe it won't be. <laughs> okay, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's coming off in bits. Not sure exactly why, but it's a little bit of sticky there that, okay. Eek. Okay, so <laughs> the sticky, the adhesive sticky stuff is very, it's very sticky. So I'm gonna, hmm, there. Didn't look like it was wanting to stick very well there. Now do some good tapping. And what are the chances that I can put my hands on the silicone mat again? Because silicone is resistant to heat. There we go. Oh, okay. So obviously there's a little spot here where this sticky paper did not transfer the stickiness from the adhesive sheet. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to heat it first and get what's on there to, to melt and be set so that when I'm playing it with more, with it more, the, the other, this first gold part won't won't brush off and then I'll go back and I'll fix it somehow. Ooh, it's so much fun to see it melt and turn. Oops, come back here. Okay, I've got to move my heat tool out of the way. I keep blowing it. I didn't get a good hold of it with my scissors there. Oh, so pretty. Okay, it's almost fully dipped at the bottom of the word. I need to go back and make it so that there's a little bit more stickiness there and there. 
and I'm just trying to decide I think I'm going to try using my liquid glue just to fill in those spots so I'm going to put like the teeniest the teeniest drop of my liquid glue there and then I'm going to use the nozzle just to spread it around a little because I don't want it to be bulgy just a nice layer and I need to do that over here too because there's some there okay and now I can go back and do the sprinkling again there is a way to fix almost every problem or if you can't fix it hide it or you know adopt it or whatever okay so that's mostly covered there might be a little bit of green that's showing along the edge but we'll see Woo. oh <laughs> you know what um, this thing is so hot it's making the paint bubble so I was getting bubbles of gold maybe I shouldn't get quite so close oh, yeah I never thought about how the adhesive would react to it just thought about how the powder would react and the powder is melting but the adhesive bubbled on the edge of my s oh my goodness it might have gold warts <laughs> but hmm let's see not the best yeah you can see that yeah it got too hot for the adhesive on the s there but that's one way of doing the dipped lettering um, is just doing half without an adhesive sheet on it and half with and hopefully you don't run into um, the snags that I did but um, yeah gold dipped lettering and the other thing that I was going to share with you at the last was I've grabbed this stamp and I'll grab a piece of scrap white cardstock here just to show you how you might want to get the multicolor stamping and again I looked at the recipes that are online for demonstrators they are under happening now click on the word catalogs scroll down to well in this case it's the mini catalog or whatever catalog you want to look at and and then underneath it'll be catalog resources and I don't know something like catalog recipes so I've got for each of these ink pads I've got a finger dauber Highland Heather Misty Moonlight Mint Macaron and I'm just gonna give this a good brush make sure there isn't any factory dust on it there you go and um, let's see I think I'm going to start with what would be my lightest color I think mint macaron is kind of the lightest color I think I'll start with the light and then go to the darker ones so I'm going to load the sponge dauber up and put some mint there and some mint there and some mint there maybe three different spots yeah one two three done with mint and go on to Highland Heather and load the sponge dauber up and Heather there going in a little bit maybe a bit more Heather there and Heather there two spots with Highland Heather and then I think that leaves about two spots left for Misty Moonlight oh really got to ink this one up it does hardly have any blue on it okay and I'm turning my ink pad sideways to see where I can see I think I missed some ink there um, definitely need some ink down there whoop <laughs> tapping the block when I hold it sideways I might go back and do a little bit of blue light edging around maybe where I have a couple of the other colors 
yeah, when I hold it sideways, it looks mostly like there's a sheen of ink on most areas of it. Okay, so now I'm going to huff and puff, huff, moisten those droplets of ink with my breath and give a good push and hopefully, crossing fingers, this will be, ooh, there it is. Yeah, again, it seems like my inks are maybe a little bit, um, whoop, um, my inks might be a little bit juicier than the inks that the artists used for the samples in the catalog, but that's basically how to get those multicolors and those were the ones that were used. They were listed in the recipe, the mint macaron, the misty moonlight and the highland heather. And then there's your dipped word of thanks to go across. And there's some ribbon in there. And the base of the little card is um, also misty moonlight. So I just need to finish. Uh, I, I probably cut my paper a little bit too small, but finish cutting this down and... Um, putting it together and I'll have cased the catalog and tried out some fun and new techniques. So hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation. It gave you some ideas of things that you can do with stamps and inks and dyes that you have on hand, embossing powders too. Um, I hope you have some time to get it out and have some fun this week. If you do have any questions, please give me a shout and thank you, thank you so much for joining me tonight for my amazing silhouettes tutorial. Have a great rest of the week, everyone, and we'll talk to you another time. Bye for now.